Hey, what's going on everyone? I'm Brian Thornberry and today I'm going to teach you how to code the double DQN algorithm. We're going to build on the code from the last video where we trained deep Q learning on Atari games. If you haven't been following along, go ahead and click the link in the description below to get the starter code for this project. Okay, here we are. We're looking at the paper for double Q learning. Double Q learning is a really simple improvement to the deep Q network with big benefits. Now there's actually only one thing we need to look at in this whole paper. So I'm going to scroll down real quick. And here it is right here, the beautiful equation. All it does is change the way we compute our targets when we're computing our loss inside of our compute loss function on the batch of transitions. Remember that before when we were computing the target for the Q network, we were selecting the action for the next state using the target Q network. And then we also got the Q value for that action with the target Q network. Now instead, we select the action for the next state using the online network, and then we get the Q value for that action using the target network. It's a subtle difference, and if this doesn't make sense, just wait, the code definitely will. This is a really great time to take the opportunity to understand how these equations transition themselves into actual code. Okay, let's just take a look at how the code changes. Okay, let's open up PyCharm. If this is your first video in the series, go ahead and click the link in the description below to download the starter code for this project. You'll be able to get this entire directory of code so you can easily follow along. I highly recommend watching the previous videos so you can understand exactly what's going on in this code. Okay, so let's just dive into it. First of all, let's go ahead and change our logger here. Let's just change this to be called Atari double. Let's change our save path to be the same. You can see I have a couple things left over here from the previous video where I showed you how to improve the Atari score. We're going to be using all those same improvements in this code. And then let's just scroll down to our compute loss function. Right here is where we're computing our targets. This is what we're going to change. So we're going to go ahead and add it in like this with torch.nograd if self.double do pass for now else. So we're going to go ahead and leave this previous target computation in here in case we want to turn off the double DQN. We're going to leave that as an option. Now observe right here, we get all the Q values for the new observation in the transition using the target net. And then we select the highest Q value effectively using the target net to select what it thinks is the best action for that next observation. Using double DQN, we're going to change this so that the online net does the action selection and the target net is what is used for computing the Q value of that action. Okay, so I'm going to type up right now how we use the online network to select the action for the next observation. All right, and there we have it. Right here, we get all the Q values for the new observation using the online net, which is self. And then right here, we use argmax to select the action indice with the highest Q value. Now we need to get the Q value for this action indice using the target network. I'm going to type that up right now. Okay, so first we get all the Q values for the new observation using the target network. And then we call torch.gather to select from those Q values computed by the target network based on the indice of the action selected by the online network. This gives us the target network's expected Q value for the online network's expected best action of the next observation in the transition. Now all that's remaining is to compute the targets as we do below. We copy this line right here, copy, paste, and change this to be target selected Q values. Clean this up. And that's it. We've made the change to implement double DQN. But don't forget, we need to add in this self.double right here so that we can turn double DQN on and off. Do that right here. Let's default to true. And self.double equals double. And that's it. Double DQN is implemented. But like I said, it's a really great opportunity to understand how the equations turn into code. Okay, so now I'm going to train this on breakout. It's going to take a while. I'm going to cut to that when it's done. And once it's done, we're going to compare the training graphs with our best implementation without double DQN, which is the version from the previous video. All right, so I finished training on breakout and you can see the results were not spectacular. So I was expecting double DQN to really knock it out of the park with this one. And you can see we have double DQN in blue here and we have our vanilla DQN in orange, which is the best version from the previous video. And you can see I trained it much longer, but I cut off the double DQN early because I could see that we really weren't going to be seeing much more results out of it over the length of the training run. So I went ahead and ran the agent from the double DQN training run and it hadn't actually learned the game breaking 
interesting strategy that the previous one did. So I went and took a look at the paper and I realized that with double DQN, breakout actually performed worse. So I was really disappointed with this and I didn't want to end the video on that note. So I went ahead and did two more training runs, not on breakout this time, but on space invaders. Let's see, take a look here. And now we can see our space invaders graphs. So in blue, we have the non double DQN. So that's the vanilla. And in red, we have the double DQN training run. So looking at these, we can see there's really not a huge difference as we go up and up and up and up right around 1.2 million frames. We see that the red starts outpacing the blue and the red is the WDQN, so this should be expected. But then we see that the blue catches back up right around 2.5 million frames. Now, if I would have kept running this for even longer, maybe it would have kept improving. It's tough to tell. It had certainly seemed like it was stagnating. So once again, even though we can see that we definitely had faster training with double DQN, they both ended up in ultimately around the same place. And when I was watching the agents actually play, they do appear to be around the same skill level. So why is this? Why aren't we seeing the expected results that the paper claimed out of double DQN? I have a couple hypotheses and I would need to run a lot more experiments to test them. But given that these training runs are taking 20 to 22 hours each, it's not exactly cheap to test all your hypotheses. And this is why reproducibility is a huge challenge in reinforcement learning. If you're not satisfied with this, I suggest you go and take the double DQN code, experiment with different hyperparameter combinations, and I bet you will find a version that will train to a higher score. So to wrap this video up, I'm going to show the agents playing both the vanilla and the double DQN so you can see them side by side and compare them for yourself. Thanks for watching this video. Remember to like and subscribe, especially if you want to learn more about AI. Our next video is going to be about dueling DQN, which is another enhancement to the DQN algorithm, and hopefully we'll be seeing better results than with double DQN. After that, we're going to be covering even more reinforcement learning algorithms. Have a great day.